What is up everyone? Today I have a bunch of pretty damn interesting news for you. So I'm not going to keep you guys waiting, but just before we jump into the news, I want to say I apologize if I look a little bit tired. I woke up around 4am, it was really hot for some reason, and then my cousin called me and sent me the weirdest things. But yeah, let's get right into the news. Okay, so first piece of news that we have is actually very exciting for Oculus Quest users. You guys remember a little while back we talked about Android apps coming to the Oculus Quest? Well, it seems that that has been more than confirmed at this point. I mean, we already knew that it was bound to happen because of the way Infinite Office has to expand, but it seems that now Facebook employees are getting Android apps on the Oculus Quest. So let me read you this article from Upload VR. It appears that employees also get access to some exclusive features even if they don't work at the VR arm of the social network giant. So basically employees at Facebook, because of the Oculus wellness budget, you know, the thing where they were giving out Oculus Quest devices to people that work at Facebook, a lot of employees decided to start getting Oculus Quest. And here, Dan Grover has sent out a tweet. Got an Oculus Quest as my company decided it would be reimbursed under wellness budget. It flagged me as an employee and I get an internal app store with stuff like Quip or Google Docs. Gotta say, these ENG estimates are way more realistic in VR. So it definitely seems like there is a hidden store. I don't know if you guys remember, but we actually got an option to put in a test store in that whole different hidden section of the store on the Oculus PC app that Basti found. And I have a strange feeling if a lot of people looked, we might just find this exact store in there. Now, the thing is, these are Quest apps, and that's a PC store, so it probably wouldn't be these exact ones, but this is definitely something they're testing internally, and if you're flagged as an employee, you get access to these kinds of things. It's very interesting to see that they are working on it, and now it's getting out to people, like it is actually out. It's not just hidden, it's coming out to the public. So that's very, very exciting, and I cannot wait to see more and more of these apps coming to the Oculus Quest, because productivity. And I like productivity. Also, Editor Mystical here. Something interesting to note is that Google Docs normally requires Google Play services. However, it seems that we will still be getting that on the Oculus Store, especially from that tweet. So I think we can start looking forward to more apps that would normally require Google Play services to start appearing on the Oculus Store without actually needing Google Play services. Or maybe we will get Google Play services. I highly doubt that one, but it's still a possibility. Quite interesting. Let me know what you think down below. Oh, here's an interesting one. Collaborative architecture tool, Archeo, runs on Oculus Quest, iPad, and more. So here is another example of cross-device development. So basically cross devices. Like, you know, we already have cross-platform games, for example, you can play on PC and on Oculus Quest, and the two servers will connect you together, and it's the same game. Well, it seems that now we're also getting cross-device compatibility with things like phones. And I mean, we've seen this before as well. We've seen an app that would allow Quest users to be in VR in a certain place in the world, and you on your phone to be able to see them in AR mode. That was really cool, whatever happened to that. But it definitely seems like that is becoming more and more popular. Collaborative world building software. Archeo runs on Oculus Quest as well as other devices and can import models from Revit, Rhino, and SketchUp for a cross-platform multiplayer service, which could save builders time and money. Archeo allows real-time revisions to 3D designs live in collaboration with others. Upload VR has tested a promising version of the software on the Oculus Quest with both Oculus Touch controllers and controller-free hand tracking. Archeo's interface is very interesting with tools that snap and slide for careful sizing of walls and buildings. You can easily view models at full one is to one scale to get a look from specific perspective or size the world down into a miniature and make big changes. So looking at the article, this definitely looks interesting and it's a collaborative effort. So it allows you and your team to work on something together, again, saving time and money. That's very exciting. I love seeing practical use cases for VR in work in exercise and gaming. And yeah, it's becoming more and more popular. There's no hiding that. It's very, very exciting to see. And in case you guys want to check out the full article, it's down below as always. Oh, here's one that myself, I was quite excited for this one and I sent it to Kat straight away. AMD has brought RDNA 2 to two laptops with the RX 6000M series. And why is this exciting? Well, this is exciting for a number of different reasons. First of all, gaming laptops have always been expensive and they, they will continue being expensive because of the way they are built. They are not computers, they are not modular. The parts you get in them are usually the parts that will stay in them forever. And currently we've been pretty much limited to an AMD CPU and an NVIDIA graphics card or an Intel CPU and an NVIDIA graphics card. But the gaming laptops, they didn't really come with AMD GPUs. 
However, that seems to be about to change. At Computex, AMD announced three new graphics chips for laptops using its latest RDNA 2 architecture. AMD says its RX 6000M series delivers up to 50% higher performance or 43% less power at the same performance compared to the prior RX 5000M series. How cool is that? So for example, we've got here the RX 6600M. It has 20 compute units, 8 gigabytes of VRAM, an 128-bit memory bus, 32 megabytes of infinity cache, and a target TDP of 50 watts to 100 watts. So this is exciting for the PC nerds out there, and me trying to explain all of this and how it works would take a whole different video of its own, but I did actually make a video quite a while back about kind of nice laptops to look for if you're looking for a VR-ready laptop, and most of those laptops, again, were Intel CPUs and NVIDIA GPUs, or AMD CPUs and NVIDIA GPUs. It was usually an NVIDIA GPU. It just wasn't a good option for AMD graphics cards. And the thing with AMD, and it's something I have seen, I could be completely wrong about this, this could have changed throughout the years, is they are usually cheaper. So for example, now we can start looking forward to seeing laptops with very good specs being cheaper. And I, by cheaper, I don't mean under 1K, it's their gaming laptops. Again, we have to set our expectations, but they are going to be cheaper for the price of a gaming laptop, if you get what I'm trying to say. Like for example, 1000 euro is cheap for a gaming laptop. It's not cheap in terms of money, but it is cheap for a gaming laptop. I'm not very good at explaining things, am I? Either way, we can start looking forward to seeing much more bang for buck, or at least I hope so. I mean, just looking at these specs, I mean, I am an AMD fan, so of course I am going to be slightly happy here, like a lot happy. Like currently I have a Razer Blade 15 with an Intel Core i7 9th generation and an RX 2060, which is, it's, it's okay, but could be better and definitely could be better for the price. So definitely looking forward to checking this out. And again, if you guys want to check out the full graphs and the full kind of specs and everything, check out the upload VR article down below. There's a bunch of benchmarks here and a bunch of slides presented by AMD. Things that might genuinely interest you in case you are in the market for a gaming laptop right now, which is cool. They're cool, okay? Like productivity, that's one thing. Productivity on the go is one thing. But being able to play PC VR on the go without having to use a cloud PC, without having to be connected to a high-speed network, that's a whole nother thing. I'm very excited for that. Once again, Editor Mystical here. This is actually not the only thing AMD has come out with. And AMD has been kind of behind NVIDIA when it comes down to these feature sets in the past. But Kat messaged me yesterday on the Discord, very, very excited, telling me that AMD's counterpart to DLSS has finally been released. It's called Fidelity Effects, and it is going to work as far down as GTX 1060 GPUs. Now, that's interesting, because making it work on older NVIDIA GPUs is is a whole different thing. I mean, that is amazing. And the thing is, as Kat said, it is probably going to need time to mature, unless AMD is going to pull an Uno reverse card on us and show us something that they've been working on for multiple years that is actually already fully mature, which would be amazing. But for apps and games to start supporting it, I think that might take a little while. Either way, it is very exciting to see AMD finally having a counterpart to DLSS. And yeah, it just kind of shows to me that uh, I am now even happier to be an AMD fan. <laughs> Some people in the comment section are going to completely disagree with AMD and AMD in general because of the feature sets NVIDIA has and the, how much NVIDIA has helped VR in the past, but AMD is catching up now, and I'm very happy about that. Let me know what you think about all this down below. Oh, here's a big one. I played Far Cry. Yeah, I played Far Cry. It was a good damn game, okay? So the previously announced Far Cry VR arcade game is launching at locations today, and We've got our first look by Weave. It's Upload VR. I'm reading from Upload VR. Far Cry VR Dive into Insanity is a zero latency VR experience and launches at 33 of the company's locations. The game is set ahead of the events of Far Cry 3 and features the same tropical island environment as well as the game's iconic villain. Vas. So up to eight players team up and try and escape the island armed with rifle-shaped controllers. Over the course of the experience, they'll be taxied across the island in a lift, cross chasms of rickety platforms, and face off with Vas and his followers in a cinematic battle. So if you guys have ever played Far Cry, or if you guys have ever wanted a Far Cry VR, this is certainly going to be quite interesting. From what I see here, this is only launching at the certain locations right now, which is quite unfortunate because I live in a place where, well, there's pretty much 0% chance that I'm ever going to get any of these location-based experiences. But it's still exciting to see that these larger companies, larger game studios, are getting interested in VR, are creating VR experiences. It really shows you how much VR has grown. 
And even though the CEO of the company that owns Rockstar might not think of VR as a big thing or big enough to even implement it into his own games, we have all these other companies that think it is clearly big enough to start developing for VR and having your games come to life in VR. They're seeing the potential there. And I think that's amazing. I think the potential is there, and I think that companies really should be looking into that potential. But hey, that could just be me. I don't think VR is a gimmick anymore, as I said in the previous video where I talked about things like this. And Photogrammetry app, other site coming to the Oculus Quest late 2021. So, a lot of people who want Photogrammetry apps on the Quest, including myself. I'm actually a big fan of Photogrammetry. I do a lot of really weird, really big Photogrammetry projects. I actually photogrammetry my entire estate using a drone. It was quite interesting. Other site is a new exploration app featuring Photogrammetry capture from around the world coming to the Oculus Quest and Quest 2 in late 2021. The developers, Raise New Media, posted a trailer announcing their news on their YouTube channel. There's not a whole lot of detailed information, but it seems like the app will use photogrammetry to create lifelike environments from around the world, which the user can explore and be guided through. So again, this is another very exciting thing, because let's say you can't go to a certain place around the world, but you want to visit it anyway. Like for example, my mom visited Vatican City on the Oculus Quest, got stuck at the top of the building, and it was very funny to watch. Yes, mom, I know you're watching this right now, but it is a very nice, very exciting way to be able to explore these realistic places, because with photogrammetry, photogrammetry is very good, guys. Like, it is much better than your Google Maps Street View. You will see these things in detail as if you were there, especially if you have a nice high-resolution headset, and it'll give people the option to explore places that they wouldn't normally be able to visit. It's very exciting, and I cannot wait to see more and more of these apps coming out. Using photogrammetry allows us to traverse the real world without actually traversing the real world. Mike from VRO actually did a great, great video on connecting to a robot in a completely different place and taking over its body. Imagine we could do that, like, in a better way in the future, where we can connect to these humanoid robots and just take over them and traverse a place just from the comfort of our own home. I mean, I know, for certain people, it's the actual physical ability to be in that place, and that's what matters. But for others that, again, might not be able to do so, connecting to that kind of thing would be a lifelong dream. And it might just be their only way. It's it's very exciting, and the future, I don't know what it holds for us. But either way, that is going to be it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, I'm very sorry if I looked tired or sounded tired today, but uh, I pretty much only had two hours of sleep, and the news does have to be delivered to you guys. If you guys liked the video, please leave a like. If you guys disliked it, I guess this button works too, but please tell me why down in the comment section below. If you guys are not yet a part of our community, make sure to join our Discord down below, make sure to join our Reddit, where I want to see you posting your spicy memes. If you guys would like to support the channel in any way, shape, or form, we've got sick merch down below that doesn't put a huge Jetting body and mugs that boost your FPS by 300%. Anyway, guys, when you're content coming up on the channel, daily, make sure to smack the subscribe button. We're recording my balance again next video. Peace.